Well, good evening, good evening, good evening, and a happy Wednesday to every one of you out there who have joined us here at Hamilton Seventh-day Adventist Church, right here in the little island of Bermuda. We're happy to be here with you, and we welcome you here with us, those of you in the sanctuary, and those of you online on social media platforms who have joined us, we're glad to have you here with us. And I have to say, uh, I had a wonderful day today because I met a few ladies who let us know that they, they enjoy Hamilton Church service. Came all the way from New York. Yeah, three lovely ladies. Three, I put four, three lovely ladies. <laughs> three, three lovely ladies. So I want to say, give a shout out to them as we welcome you all here. Uh, Sister Susan Taylor and Heather Wint and Carlene Wint. Uh, they're from the Lebanon SDA Church in Queens, New York. They came here on the ship. Uh, they came all the way to Bermuda and we met, we met up with them today. It was wonderful to meet you all. I don't know if you're watching or, or what, what. You may see this program at some point. So God bless you guys. Continue to serve Jesus with your whole heart. And it was awesome to meet you. Well, we're, again, we welcome you here on this prayer meeting service. And we have two Wednesday birthdays. I'm starting to mix up my fingers today. I'm putting three for two and four for three. Uh, we have two. <laughs> two Wednesday birthdays uh, in that of Sister Ebony Douglas. That's the daughter of uh, uh, dear Elder Evan Douglas, who is all the way over there in Florida. Hopefully he's watching or something. But Elder Douglas, God bless you. And happy birthday to you, Ebony. May God continue to bless you. And then we have Sister Gloria LaShure. Happy Wednesday birthday to you. This is just as special as a Sabbath because when God's people get together, it's always special. So you have a, a birthday on a day when God's people get together. So happy birthday and God bless you with many, many more. Amen. Amen. Well, let's have our prayer, our welcome, our opening prayer. Let's all, uh, if we can stand for our opening prayer. Amen. Wonderful. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we're gr grateful for your blessings, for your presence, for all the wonderful things you do for us day after day, for the life you've given us. We pray, Father, that as we fellowship now and worship before you, even on a Wednesday night, that God, the power of your presence and your Holy Spirit will be in this place, in every heart, and will go out to those watching and enter into their hearts, Lord that we all will be as one and you'll receive our worship. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you, amen. We'll now have uh, Sister Taka come sing our prayer song for us. Tis the blessed hour of prayer when our hearts lowly bend and we gather to Jesus, our Savior and friend. Tis the blessed hour of prayer when our hearts lowly bend and we gather to Jesus, our Savior and friend. If we come to him in faith, his protection to share, what a balm for the weary, oh how sweet to be there, blessed are our prayer, blessed are our prayer, what a balm for sweet to be there. Verse 2. Tis a blessed hour of prayer when the Savior draws near with a tender compassion his children to bear. When he tells us we may cast at our feet every care what a balm for the weary oh how sweet to be there 
Blessed are all prayer. Blessed are all prayer. What a bum for the weary. Oh, how sweet to be there. Amen. Thank you very much, Sister Tucker. And even before we, we pray tonight, I just want to recognize that we have a young man in our midst who is here tonight on the drums. Yes. We need to keep our young people in prayer. Amen. Thank you, Kipton. My brother Kipton has come here to play an instrument. It's a wonderful thing to see our young people wanting to be involved and wanting to serve Christ. So keep brother Kipton in your prayers. As he grows, he will grow in Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, it is time for prayer. And I'm just going to ask really quickly if there's any special prayer requests out there, if you want to raise your hand. Amen. Let's just, oh, oh boy, can you just take that to him? Can let us know what that prayer request is. Sometimes it's just good to say it out loud. You got people watching online who can also pray for and with you. Good evening. Yes, Asking sir. For prayer for my son and also for his mother in the hospital and for all of our young folks. May God will place a hedge of protection, a hedge of angels around them to keep them safe. Amen. Good evening. Let me pray for my health and, and my family. Amen. Amen. Good evening. I'd like to ask for prayers for this whole island and thank you for bringing us through the little hurricane or storm what mm. went on. And I just give God thanks that he really saved us all from any harm or dangers. And I pray for all the sick and the shut in. Amen. Amen. Also for Gina. Yes. Being treated, they ask for blessings for her. Yes, absolutely. A prayer of thanks for the Lord answering a special request for my two brothers. They're both out of the hospital recuperating. And also a special prayer for other family members and individuals that we know who are going through some serious um, medical and relational troubles. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I, I'd like for you to remember Simone. Um, her arm is healing. They say it's doing well, but very painful. Mm. Um, also, Bermuda Institute is having their spiritual advocacy week, and remember our young people in prayer, so that they can make that long-term commitment to God. Amen. 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 Wonderful. Thank you. Well, at this time, we can kneel, if you can, in prayer, and if anyone so desires to come to the front, they can. Uh, but let's kneel together in prayer. Amen. Oh, our great God and our heavenly Father, the one who loves us more than we even can comprehend. We're so grateful for the love you have toward us, Lord, and the attention you give to us day by day. Lord, you care about everything we get into. You care about all that we do in our lives, all that we say, all that we think, all that we feel. And so, Father, we humbly come bow before you together as a people, as your children, together, Lord, coming before you in need of your help, in need of your special attention, Lord. But Father, we ask that you will remember Brother Gerald's son. Father, bless him with all he needs, God, for no one knows his needs better than you. I pray that you will bless him in every way possible. That God, he will be healed, he will be 
blessed with a close and deep relationship with you. Father, we pray for his mother also that, God, you will see the need there and answer her needs, answer her prayers. Draw near to her and comfort and guide her, Lord. And I pray that for each of us, Lord, we will find our purpose and our being in you. Jesus, we ask for my dear sister's family. Prayer up for families. I know we all want our families, Lord, to be saved. We want our families to be united. We want love and joy and peace to exist in our families. And I pray that you will bless her family now, God. Bring this family together in Christ Jesus. God, we pray to thank you for protecting us through the storm. Father, so much so that even the big hurricane we thought that might hit us this week, God, you have seen fit to have grace and mercy upon this island and have steered it away from us. We pray that you will continue to not only bless us, but every country around the world, Lord. For many people in this world have suffered greatly from natural disasters, but you have, you have blessed us. And our hearts cry out, thank you, Jesus. And I pray for those who have struggled already with natural disasters in their countries. Many lives have been lost and homes lost and lives uprooted. Father, we pray that your, your power will go and work on their behalf. Restore their country, restore their lives, Lord, and may they draw so close to you that even while you are rebuilding them, God, they will know you as their personal Lord and Savior, that they will experience peace in the midst of their personal storms. Father, we thank you for Sister Simon's brothers. You have brought them out and they're now recovering. But God, continue to work your miracles in their lives, Lord. Continue to bless them. Father, hold them up in your hands and may they hear your voice speak to them day after day that their faith will be strengthened and their joy full as they watch you work on their behalf. Lord, we pause also to pray for our young people. It's a, such a blessing to see Kipton here, God. May you continue to grow him and bless him and increase his gift, Lord, that he may help others to come to Jesus Christ. But we remember also our students at Bermuda Institute and all over this island, God, that as they go through this week, especially this week, a week of prayer that they're having, that Jesus, you will feed their needs in ways that we can. That these young people will have such a strong faith and hope in you that they will never leave. That they will always seek to find purpose in you. They will always seek to do your will in their lives, Lord. Give them strength, protect them from the enemy, from so many things. I know we can't protect them from everything, but God, we're praying that wherever possible, Lord, you know best, but wherever possible, keep them from the kinds of sins and things that they could get involved with, Lord, that they may uphold your standards, they may uphold your will in their lives and watch how you use their lives to make a difference with everyone around them. Father, we're grateful and thankful for this church. We're grateful for the people, oh God, who attend this church. And we pray for every single member. Lord, so many people are sick. So many people are suffering. So many people are struggling, whether it be emotional, mental, or physical. God, even we think now, especially for Sister Gina Cunnington, Lord, as she goes through her, her ordeal. Father, we pray for healing in that situation. We pray that everything will work together for her good. We pray to God that she will see you moving in all of this. And that in the end, Lord, her testimony will be sure. Her testimony will be great. And many souls will be impacted by how you have brought her through this ordeal. And many others, Lord, are struggling with illness right now. Father, we pray for each one. May not be able to call them all by name right now, but certainly you know their, them and you know their situation. Save us all when you come. Save us, Lord, for we are facing the end of time in our near future and we need you. 
We're grateful that you have called us and chosen us to be yours. May we never forsake you because you have promised you will never leave or forsake us. And in the end, may we all gather around that wonderful tree of life, just laughing and smiling and hugging one another and singing your praises because of all you've brought us through. Lord, may you do this for each of us. In the name of your son, Jesus, we pray that everyone say, Amen. 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 At this time, as the music plays, our sister Taka will come and bless us with song. First song for song service is going to be hymn number 216. When the roll is cold up yonder. I want to be there. Too much stress down here. <laughs> When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more And the morning breaks eternal bright and fair When the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore And the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there When the roll is called up yonder 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 I'll be there on that bright and cloudless morning when the dead in Christ shall rise and the glory of his resurrection share when his chosen one shall gather to their home beyond the skies and the roll is called up yonder I'll be there when the roll is called up yonder when the roll is called up yonder when the roll is called up yonder when the roll called up yonder I'll be there let us labor for the master from the dawn till setting sun let us talk of all his wondrous love and care then when all of life is over and our work on earth is done and the roll is called up yonder I'll be there when the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. Our next song is going to be number four, five, six, My Lord and I. And I'm sure when Moses was leading the children of Israel, he said, just Lord, you and me, <laughs> and these miserable people. <laughs> and the things have not changed. But you have to take this as it is, the Lord and I, my Lord and I. so precious so very dear to me he loves me with such tender love he loves so faithfully i could not live apart from him i love to feel him nigh and so we dwell together 
my Lord and I. Sometimes I'm faint and weary. He knows that I am weak. And as he bids me lean on him, his help I gladly seek. He leads me in the paths of light beneath the sunny sky. And so we walk together, my Lord and I. I tell him all my sorrows. I tell him all my joys. I tell him all that pleases me. I tell him what annoys. I tell me what I ought to do. He tells me how to try. And so we walk together, my Lord and I. He knows that I am longing some weary soul to win. And so he bids me go and speak the loving word for him. He bids me tell his wondrous love and why he came to die. And so we work together, my Lord and I. Amen, amen. It is now time for our scripture reading. And our scripture reading for this evening can be found in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 9 verses 4 to 6. And the Bible says, For to him that is joined to all the living, there is hope. For a living dog is better than a dead lion. That's something. For the living know that they shall die, but the dead know what? Not anything. Neither have they any more a reward, for the memory of them is forgotten. Verse 6. Also, their love and their hatred and their envy is now perished. Neither have they any more a portion forever in anything that is done under the sun. My, my, my. I wonder what pastor has in store for us this evening. But you have heard the scripture from the mouth of God. Be blessed. Our song of meditation is, It May Be at Morn. We don't know when it's going to be, but we know we shall see him soon. It may be at morn, when the day is awaking, when sunlight through darkness and shadow is breaking, that Jesus will come in the fullness of glory to receive from the world his own. Jesus, how long, how long, here we shout the glad song, Christ returneth, hallelujah, hallelujah, amen, hallelujah, amen. It may be at me. It may be at twilight, it may be perchance that the blackness of midnight will burst into light in the blaze of his glory when Jesus receives his own. Oh, Lord Jesus, how 
long, how long, ere we shout the glad song. Christ returneth, hallelujah, hallelujah, amen, hallelujah, amen. Oh, joy, oh, delight, should we go without dying? No sickness, no sadness, no dread and no crying. Caught up through the clouds with the Lord into glory. When Jesus receives his own. Sing with me. Oh, Lord Jesus, how long, how long, ere we shout the glad song, Christ returneth, hallelujah, hallelujah, amen, hallelujah. Amen, amen. So we're just going to flip the order uh, for this evening, and we're going to do testimonies right now. And as you, Elder Smith, you could just grab this mic for me if anyone would like to offer the, up a testimony. And as you are preparing your minds for what you're going to say, I will lead out uh, with my testimony. Um, the Lord has truly, truly, truly blessed my family, um, despite of all what's going on around the world, and even in Bermuda, God has blessed us. And I'll say this, my, uh, my daughter was recently married in August, August 1st, Sister Simons. And just this past Sunday, we went to a gender reveal because her and her husband are expecting. And not only is it one, but it's two. <laughs> so during the uh, gender reveal, we was going back, oh, we want a boy, we want a boy. We at least let one of them be a boy. Um, obviously, we have a granddaughter, Princess Leia, and we was hoping to have uh, a boy. So the question was asked to Leia, you know, what was she like? What, if she had, a, had anything to do with it, what would she prefer? And she said, a sister and a brother. So we're like, okay, cool, at least we have another, you know, one on our side for a boy. So the setting was at the docking stool park, uh, overlooking the water, and it was these two great big boxes. And so on the count of three, we said, three, two, one. First box, it's a boy. So we're like, yes, thank you, Jesus, we have a boy. And they said, all right, let's do the second box. On the count of three, three, two, one. Another boy. So, so they're expecting two boys. So of course, our hearts are full, and she's excited. Now it's an excited. Leah's not quite as excited because she didn't got a sister. <laughs> but we're just praying that uh, they're going to be healthy. And so I ask you to re keep them in prayer as their family has now moving from three to five, almost overnight. And you know how boys can be. They can be a handful. So we just want to pray that God just uh, uh, protects them and nurtures them and just encourages them in the admonition of the Lord. So is there anyone else? Or is there anyone that would like to share? Ah, right up the front. You can always count on Sister Talker. On Sunday, my husband and his brother left Bermuda for him to have heart surgery. Mm. Um, a stand possibly, and uh, over else, else they can find. Um, so they left on Sunday. Monday was the operation, supposed to be the operation. I didn't call Eddie till late that night because I figured Derek would be out, he wouldn't feel well, mm -hmm. I'll let him rest. So I called late. And the news, Derek answered the phone. I said, Derek? 
he sounded pretty good, Derek. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, what happened? You didn't have the surgery? I let Eddie talk to you, he said. Eddie talked to me and said, they couldn't find anything wrong. Oh, wow. Amen. Couldn't find anything wrong. Yeah. They went out to his arm. He said, everything's fine. Amen. So praise the Lord for that. Praise the Lord for that. Amen. All right. Anybody else? Go right ahead, Alda. Uh, I, I just want to thank God for something that happened today. I mentioned it earlier. Yes, yes. Um, it was a really, really beautiful experience. And some time ago, you know, I just asked the Lord, Lord, just make something good out of my life while I'm here. You know, I don't want to live and die and just, you know, have not contributed anything in this world to anybody. But anyway, having said that, I was so encouraged today. Um, these three ladies actually came on the ship all the way from New York and they said as soon as we hit Bermuda we have to find Hamilton Church so mm. they got off the ship they got on the ferry and came straight to town to find Hamilton Church and they were asking people along the way are you Adventist? do you know where the church is? are you Adventist? do you know where the church is? Anyway, someone told him the fire station is next to the church. Well, long story short, uh, some news came up to my office that uh, there were some people looking for you down, down, downstairs. And uh, I said, okay, I don't know what that was about. Anyway, I, I went out, and when I got to the porch right here, and I looked and I saw these three ladies down in the parking lot there, and they were screaming, hurrah! There he is, there he is, man. And so I went down the steps and they were hugging me and everything. They said, oh, we get to meet you because we watch you guys every week. Amen. And we're Amen. so thankful and so grateful for Lagos because I've learned so much. And mm. it's just, I write notes. And I mean, she went all the way in just telling me how it has impacted her life to the point where they had steps to Christ. I mean, they're on vacation. Right. And they they're had, the lady in the wheelchair had steps to Christ in her basket, and they had signs at the times, and while they were coming from the ferry terminal, they were handing out books and pamphlets to people. And it was such a wonderful thing to know. I said, Lord, thank you for allowing me to be a part that some part of my life can be good for something, mm, you know? Mm. And so then they, they kept talking about all the different people that they, uh, haven't they've missed on Lagos and they said well where's out of old boy we haven't seen out of old boy so I got on my phone and I said hey Jamel come downstairs a second <laughs> so he came out of the office and as soon as he hit the port ah, <laughs> and we had to take pictures and hugs and all that it was just a wonderful experience but I'm saying it say it's so encouraging yeah. I thank God for that experience because it says you know what all the sacrifices of studying night after night mm. and you know going through all your ups and downs it's worth something. And somebody in the world is blessed by it. So I just want to praise God. Thank you, Jesus, for allowing us to be a part of something so amazing. Amen. And you know, she also, but she's also said, you look much taller on TV. <laughs> Which I had to laugh at. It was so hilarious. But it was such an, a joyous experience that people around the world are tuned in to this little church. You know, so we want to give God all the praise and the honor. And I see that my uh, pastor is waiting in the wind, in the wings. So uh, I'm going to ask him if he will take his rightful place at the pulpit and bring us the word of God. Amen. Church, say amen. 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 Come on now. <laughs> Got to be careful when these elders start getting popular in the streets. You know what I'm saying? Got to be careful about that. Come on, man. We got a lot to cover tonight. Uh, let's get into uh, God's word. First of all, we like to get into our text uh, that we want to learn. And I want to see this lovely couple over to my left at the back. I want to see them after service. Come on, let's pray together. Father in heaven, bless us as we get into your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Some of you know we like to get, if you would, ready, cave ready. Our cave prep texts continue to evolve. They continue to grow. And uh, tonight is no different. I am certain that those that have been present lately and those who are even 
fresh in the sanctuary after a long excursion, know the Bible text, huh? I can trust that they know the Bible text. Am I right, Elder Hilton? Come on, let's go, if you would, to Psalm uh, chapter 24 and verse 1. Psalm 24 verse 1 says what, church? Don't show it to them yet. Don't show it to them yet. Up there. Whoever's up there, what does it say? Psalm chapter 24 verse 1. Come on, show me. <laughs> show them the text, man. What does it say? The earth is the what? The Lord's. And the what? And the fullness thereof. The world uh, and they that dwell what? Um, they're in. I heard the elder from the back. I didn't hear many elders towards the front. Come on, next up, if you would, the next slide. Psalm chapter 23. Everybody should know Psalm chapter 23, right, Bramwell? Come on now. What does the Bible say? The Lord is what? My shepherd, I shall not warn. He maketh me to lie down in what? Green pastures. He leadeth me what? Beside the still waters. He does what? He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me, what? In paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will, what? Fear no evil, for thou art, what? With me, thy rod and thy, what? Staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy surely goodness come on now and mercy oh, I wish I had a witness in this place surely goodness and mercy show what everybody follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house what of the Lord how long forever come on next one if you would that was an easy one Psalm chapter 22 and verse 1 what does the Bible say? I see many people looking on their phones trying to get ahead. Psalm chapter 22 and verse 1. What does the Bible say? No one. There was silence in heaven for the space of half an hour. Come on now. To take me to the slide if you would. Very important text. What does the Bible say? I need you to understand. Oftentimes during Jesus' ministry, he quoted the Bible. Over and over and over again, he quoted the Bible. And even on Calvary's cross, uh, he is quoting scripture. What does the Bible say? My God, uh, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so, so far from me, from helping me, and from the words of my what? Of my roaring. My God, my God. In, if you would, in, in the New Testament, it says, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. Man, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Uh, no one knew that, and so uh, some people are just not going to make it into the cave tonight. Come on, Psalm chapter 19 and verse 7. Psalm 19 and verse 7, what does the Bible say? Lord, help us. Lord, help us. That one's about to go off the screen. It's been up there four times. Come on now. Take it to me, man. Take it to me. What does it say? The law, you had it, of the law, what? Is perfect. Come on now. Converting the soul. Some of you know the song, right? Some of you know that song, Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I can't tell. You know what I'm saying? The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony, what? Of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Come on, you know that song, right, sister? The law of the Lord is perfect. You know that song, huh? Converting the soul. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Maybe, maybe next year when we do the text again. Oh, now you want to play it? Now you want to, oh, you know it now too, huh? Unbelievable, man. Unbelievable. We don't have time to sing it tonight. Come on, let's go ahead and jump into our text for tonight as we preach about the fact that Moses was dead. Moses was dead. Come on, pull that first text up if you would. Pull that first Bible text up. What does it say? What's that next slide say? Come on now, Exodus chapter 34 and verse 7. The Bible says, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and to the fourth generation. Moses was dead. I need you to keep that text up. Put the text back up. I need you to understand that uh, God will in no wise clear the guilty. He will in no wise clear the guilty, but he loves to forgive. He loves to forgive iniquity. He loves to forgive transgression, and he loves to forgive sin. But he will in no wise clear the guilty. 
He loves to forgive iniquity. He loves to give, uh, forgive transgression. And he loves to forgive sin, but he will no wise clear the guilty. Uh, you'll get it in just a second because I need you to understand. Uh, take you all the way back to the beginning, if you would. You will remember, you will remember when Moses was born, if you would, they were trying to kill him. They were trying to kill everybody at that time. I need you to understand it's very significant because, uh, if you would, for his deliverance, uh, he was placed inside a basket and pushed down the river. It's an amazing thing because, if you would, the right person was sent. The right person from the palace came along uh, and took up the baby. And understand this, uh, Moses was raised, uh, Moses was raised in the palace. He was a slave, uh, but he was raised in the palace. Oh, you'll get it in just a second. Moses was a slave, uh, but he was raised in the palace. His parents were slaves, his siblings were slaves, but he was raised uh, in the palace. Why is this significant? Because Moses is a type of Christ. You say, preacher, what are you talking about? Well, you got to understand uh, that when God wants to deliver his people, he has to send somebody with a different mindset. You got to understand, uh, in order for him to deliver the slaves, uh, he had to send somebody who didn't have the slave mentality. Uh, he had to send somebody that was accustomed uh, to being free. He couldn't send just anybody down there because he needed somebody that knew that it was okay to be free. Hence, he sends Moses down to just like he sent Jesus. Although Jesus showed up here as a human, uh, he showed up here free. Oh, I wish I had him. Free from the burden of sin. Free, if you would, and overcoming every temptation. Why? Because in order for him to deliver men, uh, mankind, he had to send somebody who was not a slave to sin, uh, but somebody that, in essence, uh, was accustomed to being free. In other words, he has to show up in a way uh, that, in essence, people can believe uh, that somehow their deliverance is possible. It's an amazing moment, if you will, because because Moses is a great character. And Moses, if you would, gets to an age, if you would, where now huh, he'd rather suffer affliction uh, with the people of God uh, than enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Moses understands uh, that these are my people that they are mistreating. Moses understands uh, that these are my flesh and blood. Uh, and one day, Come on now. One day, he gets out there and sees an Egyptian taskmaster beating the living daylights out of an Israelite, and he lost his mind. He took hold of him, and Moses became a murderer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Went from the palace uh, to being a murderer. As soon as he kills him, come on now, try to hide it and everything else, but immediately he flees to the wilderness. Now you got to understand uh, that when you've been on the devil's territory for a while, sometimes you got to go and get, if you would, debriefed. Uh, you got to get that mess out of you. And, and he's in the wilderness for another 40 years uh, learning the things of God. Uh, but guess what? While one day he decided to go for a walk, I don't know. But he went for a walk uh, and he made his way uh, to the backside of the desert. Oh, I wish I had a witness. There are good things uh, sometimes uh, on the backside of the desert. He makes his way to the backside of the desert and he he sees a bush that's on fire but it's not being consumed. It's crackling and it's burning but it's not burning up. It's an amazing thing because later on, oh, I wish I had a witness in this place, later on, if you would, he would show his evidence that he can handle fire at any time. Come on now. He's the God not just of the New Testament. He's also the God of the Old Testament. He would actually be able to show that he could show up in a burning fiery furnace and although the furnace was on fire nobody got burned up inside it's an amazing moment when we look at it because he says I'm an all consuming fire fire is where I dwell if by chance you are beset with the fires of tribulations of trials of temptations of disturbances in your life today you serve a God 
Jehovah that dwells in fire. Oh man, it's an amazing moment because if you would, he gets to see on the backside of the desert a fire that's not consumed. Because he took his advice from this fire that wouldn't burn up on the backside of the desert. Later on, uh, he would get to see the backside of God. Oh, Lord, help us out. He went from the backside of the desert uh, to see in the backside uh, of God. Uh, you recall, man, he got up in the mountain and he was begging God, God, let me see you, man. I want to see you. Nobody's ever seen you. Let me see you. God says, okay, you want to see me? Here's what I'm going to do for you, man. I'm going to pass by you. Uh, as I pass by you, I'm going to put my hand over you. Uh, oh, friends, how big uh, is the hand of God uh, the when he puts it over you. You can't even see him. He covers him with the hand of God, hides him in the cleft of a rock and after he passes by he lets Moses see his backside and when he sees the backside of God, he comes off the mountain and guess what? They couldn't even look him in the face, man. They said, cover your face up, man. We can't even look you. And all he saw was the backside. Oh, imagine if he got to see it all. Oh, man, you couldn't deal with Moses at that time. But this is Moses, called by God. The same Moses that tells Pharaoh, let my people go. Ten great plagues, one after another, wiping all these, if you would, gods off of the face of the planet. And in that moment, then leads them across the Red Sea, as we learned a couple of weeks ago. But understand this, Moses does all of this. He is a great leader in the nation of Israel. As a matter of fact, we're going to learn he's their greatest. But he made one mistake. Moses made one cardinal mistake. One day, you got to understand, Moses was Israel's first leader. He's the first leader to deal with them after they had been slaves. They still had the slave mindset and the slave mentality. As a matter of fact, you hear them saying all the time, he, they tell Moses all the time, we were better off in Egypt. Why the world you bring us out of here? It's important to never forget that while Moses told Pharaoh to let my people go, the people had a big problem letting Pharaoh go. It's important to realize that they were so institutionalized, they were so conditioned that they struggled with cognitive dissonance. Even though they were in a better place, they weren't getting whipped every day, they were no longer, if you would, short on water and short on food. Even though they are out there and they are free, they're so, uh, come on now, they got a new crib, they got a new place to go, they got a new everything. What? They would rather go back to Egypt because Egypt is what they're used to. It's what they're comfortable with. Our oh, friends, I need you to understand that when God delivers you from something, it's very difficult for you to continue to charge forward because sometimes you have been so conditioned. You have been so institutionalized. You've been so messed up and beat down for so long that it's very difficult to move forward because you're so used to being beaten down. But you've got to understand uh, that the God you serve uh, was bruised uh, and he was beaten up. Uh, he was battered and he was torn up. Uh, and the God you serve overcame that so you won't have to. He said, I did that for you to deliver you from the mess you're going through right now. Oh, friends, I need you to understand it's an incredible story because Moses is dealing with a very stiff necked people. To the extent God tells him that, listen, after you're gone, I guarantee you, you see how contrary they are right now? You're going to see, uh, trust me, when you read the story later, you're going to see they really act the fool when you die. <laughs> yeah, it was an amazing moment because Moses gets out there and he gets vexed at a man because, and I, you know, listen, the guy 
has made water come out of a rock already. <laughs> the guy, if you would, has made manna come down from heaven. What else do you guys want? He's taking care of you. You're warm at night. You're cool in the day. Your shoes don't get old. Your clothes, you ain't got to buy no shoes. You ain't got to buy no clothes. You got to buy water. You ain't got to buy food. Up. You're being protected and cared for the entire way. Everybody else around you is hot and you're cool. Everybody else is freezing at night and you're warm. What are you complaining about? And Moses gets vexed because, guess what? They get close to the promised land and they ignore the prophecy. Yeah, yeah, In other words, they were told, uh, they were told, when you get close to the promised land, you're going to have to pass through your brother's land and get some water. When they get to that spot, Sister Tucker, God turns off the water. <laughs> Lord, help us, man. <laughs> he turns it off. Yes, he does. He turns it off. To signify to them, you're very close, it's time to go in. But instead of them receiving that, they begin to bicker, they begin to murmur. You know, every time, you know, come on, man, you don't let these people all, these, all this time, uh, you have taken them around the wilderness, you've listened to their stiff-necked parents, uh, you've made this journey. Understand, uh, you get to the brink of the promised land, it's time to go in. It's time to move forward. And in this moment, they once again are still talking about we were better off back in Egypt. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, they even accuse God of not being able to take care of their children. It's an amazing moment because if you would, friends, in this incredible moment in Scripture, Moses gets vexed. And decides he's going to take on the prerogative of God. And Moses goes to the people and he says, must we, referring to himself and Aaron, must we bring you water out of this rock? And he strikes the rock again. Now the problem with that is, is that Jesus is the rock. <laughs> Oh, rock of ages, uh, cleft for me. Uh, let me hide myself in the understand uh, that that rock was Jesus. Uh, and Jesus was only to be struck once. Uh, he was to die once for our sins. He was not to die twice. Uh, and when Moses struck the rock, he misrepresented what God's mission was all about. At the same time, he took on the prerogative of God as if somehow he could bring water out of a rock. In that moment, he misrepresented God before the people and he is given a punishment. Moses, I don't care what you say. Just because you're up there doesn't mean you don't have to be dealt with. And in that moment, he lets him know, Moses, you are not. Come on, man. You done slaved all this time to get these crazy, stiff-necked bunch of people to the promised land. They get on your nerves. They talking nonsense to you. And they get to go in, and I can't? Are you kidding me? Oh, Moses wants to plead with God. Moses said, come on, man, give me a break, man. All this stuff I've done. But God, uh, guess what? Cannot clear the guilty. He loves to forgive. He loves to, but he can't clear the guilty. And in this moment, come on, take me to the next slide. We're going to wind this thing up. Take me to the next slide, if you would. Help me up upstairs. And Moses, the Bible says, uh, and I'll get you later. He tells Moses, you're going to die. Now, understand this. When it's time for Moses to die, guess what happens? God brings him before the people. He shows up in a pillar of fire. Cloud. You can read it in Deuteronomy 31 and 34. So this was a pillar of cloud. He lets them know, Moses, you're done. You're no longer the leader. Guess what? Man, it was no retirement party. There was no pieces of cake. There was no meatballs. There was no hors d'oeuvres. There was nothing. He just simply stood there at the temple and said, your time is done. Joshua is now your leader. Moses, it's now time for you to die. And Moses, in that moment, understand, Moses was 120 years old when he died. 
The Bible says his eye was not dim, nor was his natural force abated. I need you to understand, Moses didn't die of a disease. He didn't die because he was sick. He didn't die because he had cancer. He didn't have high blood pressure. There is nothing wrong with Moses' health whatsoever. He dies simply because God said it's time for you to die. You've messed up. It's time for you to go. Oh, friends, you got to understand, man, it's an incredible thing because nothing is left. The boy can still see clear as day. Come on, let's keep going if you would. Next slide, we'll find a slide. And there arose, the Bible says, not a prophet since in Israel like unto Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. Huh? Next slide, next slide. And all the signs and the wonders which the Lord sent him to do in the land of Egypt to Pharaoh and to all his servants in all the land. Next slide. Come on, 12, and in all that mighty hand and in all that great terror which Moses showed in the sight of all Israel, all these great things, never a greater prophet, but even the greatest prophet, God couldn't clear. Next slide, if you would. Next slide. Patriarchs and Prophets, the book we're dealing with from this. Here's what it says. It says, the great ruler of nations had declared that Moses was not to lead the congregation of Israel into the goodly land. And the earnest pleading of God's servant could not secure a reversing of his sentence. He knew, Moses knew, he must die. Yeah. Yeah. Next slide, if you would. Next slide. Moses knew also that he was to die alone. No grandiose march up the mountain. Take yourself up on the mountain to die. No earthly friend would be permitted to minister to him in his last hours. Nobody out there talking about, oh, Moses, you were the best. We love you, man. We're so sorry that you're leaving. Uh, even though after he was gone, they wept for a long time. They never knew a leader that loved them so much, that put up with so much of their mess and kept on loving them anyway. And here's the thing. There was a mystery and an awfulness about the scene before him from which his heart shrank. Huh? Next slide, if you would. I need you to understand this huh? because I need you to grasp this concept that Moses is taken up on the mountain and he looks over and he sees the promised land. That's where Martin Luther King gets those words from. He went up on the mountain and he saw the promised land. But I need you to understand that some of the things that's missed in all of that is that Moses saw the entire experience. That's what's often missed. He didn't just see the land. He saw the scenes that would happen in the future in the land. Here's what it says. And he looked back upon his experience as a leader of God's people. One wrong act marred the record. If that transgression could be blotted up, he felt that he would not shrink from death. He was assured that repent. Listen to this, man. Listen to this, man. Because some of you are going to miss it. I know you're going to miss it. I promise you, you'll miss it. Here's what it says. He was assured that repentance and faith in the promised sacrifice were all that God required. Huh? Repentance, faith, and the promised sacrifice was all that God required. Hold on now. Read these last lines with me. And again, Moses did what? Confessed his sin and implored pardon in the what? In the name of what? Oh, I wish I had a witness in this place. I knew you would miss it, so I'll read it for you again. Uh, that, and again, Moses confessed his sin uh, and implored pardon in the name of who? Whoa, hold on a minute now. Hold on a minute, Sister Tucker. I know that sounds good on surface, but if all you catch is surface, then you've missed the whole story. Here you got to understand, and Moses confessed his sin and implored pardon in the name of who, Elder Smith? Jesus. Hold on a minute, man. Oh, I wish I had a witness in this place. In the name of who? In the name of Jesus. Now, we understand that today. But when Moses is up on the mountain, oh, come on now. It's 1,500 years before shepherds are watching their flocks by night. It's 1,500 years before a baby is born in Bethlehem, wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. It's 1,500 years before Herod tries to wipe everybody out. But up on that mountain, Moses saw the vision uh, and saw the scenes uh, of Jesus' life and he believed in him uh, by faith uh, 1,500 years in advance uh, that he would show up and he would deliver his people. 
Oh, hold on. Next slide, if you would. Next slide. He was permitted to look down the stream of time and behold the first advent of our Savior. He saw Jesus as a babe in Bethlehem. He heard the voices of the angelic hosts break forth in the glad song of praise to God and peace on earth. Next slide. After that, he followed the Savior to Gethsemane and beheld the agony in the garden. He saw the betrayal, the mockery, the scourging, the crucifixion. Moses saw that as he, come on, man, had lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so the Son of God must be lifted up. Now, hold on now. That whosoever believe on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You know, if that's all that happened on the mountain, that was enough, Sister Simons. But ain't all that happened. One other great thing happened. Come on, take me there if you would. Next slide. He saw, listen to this, he saw him lying in Joseph's tomb. New tomb. The darkness of hopeless despair seemed to enshroud the world. But he looked again, oh man, and behold him coming forth, a conqueror, and ascending to heaven, escorting by enduring angels, leading a multitude of, oh, if I had time, I would talk about lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty, got a multitude of captives with him, got a bunch of humans who once messed up just like you on their way to heaven. There are some humans up in glory that have already overcome and gotten the victory. Uh, friends, but that's not all. That's not all. I wish I could stop right there, but I can't. Come on. Next slide if you would. I don't want you to miss it. Check this out. He saw the shining gates open to receive him. Huh. When he got to heaven, he saw the shining gates open to receive Jesus and the multitude of captives. Don't miss it. He saw the shining gates open to receive him and the host of heaven with songs of triumph welcoming their commander. Hold on now. And there on the mountain it was revealed to Moses that he himself would be the one that should attend the Savior and open to him the everlasting God. Oh, my God, uh, that in essence, uh, hold on, Moses, uh, understand uh, you will be the one uh, to open the gates uh, when the saints go marching in. Oh, when the saints uh, go marching in, understand uh, there was rejoicing. Now Moses has hope. Uh, now he knows uh, I can die in the Lord uh, because resurrection morning is coming. Uh, I will see his face again. Uh, and I don't know how long I got to wait, but I will be there. When Jesus comes on home, our oh, friends, uh, come on now, next slide if you would. The Bible says this. Shortly after, shortly after the death of Moses, Jesus up there on the mountain because he dies by himself. You got Jesus and the angelic host doing the burial. But understand this, Ellen says, had Moses not messed up, he would have been translated when he went into the promised land. Yeah, he would have stayed. God couldn't wait to get Moses home, <laughs> okay? But in this moment, because he messed up, you have Moses and Elijah. Elijah representing those who would not see death. Who, if you would, when the Lord descends, and when he comes in the clouds of glory, we'll be standing there saying, Lo, this is our God. We've waited for him and he will save us. And guess what? Moses represents those that have died in the Lord. And the fact that I like the fact that he, he, he represents that crew is that you ought to understand that God can't wait 
to wake up his sleeping saints because the Lord couldn't wait. In the book of Jude, he comes to contend. And guess what? The devil shows up to argue with Jesus, saying, you can't take Moses because Moses struck the rock. Oh, I wish I had a witness in this place. You can take him to heaven because he messed up. And you know, I know you guys have heard of a lot of things. You've heard of Visa. You've heard of MasterCard. You've heard of Discover. Some of you have that, that little hard silver, whatever it is, American Express. Some of you got some really nice cards that afford you nice features, like you're able to go and sit in the lounge and get all the perks when you take flights. You know, I, I see the pictures on Facebook. I see the pictures. And, and the truth of the matter is, uh, is that you've got to understand uh, that, that although those credit cards are nice, uh, they were not the first credit card. Uh, because I need you to understand that on that day, uh, Jesus issued credit. Uh, oh, Lord, help us. 15, come on, some of you got cards, but ain't none of your cards uh, have an expiration date that's 1,500 years later. Uh, but in this moment, uh, he gives Moses a credit card. Uh, he lets him go to glory in advance. Uh, that in essence, uh, I'm guaranteeing uh, that 1,500 years from now, uh, I will die, but I just won't die. Uh, I will lie in Joseph's tomb uh, and early on Sunday morning, uh, I'll get up with all power in my hands uh, because uh, I am the son of the living God. The devil comes and says, what, what are you doing? He's mine. Jesus ain't got nothing to say to the devil. You don't tell me who to take. Huh? I'm taking my boy Moses on credit. Guaranteeing that one day I'll shed my blood. That he can stay in heaven eternally. Oh, you better open the gate. Hurry up, Jesus. Get your bottom in here. We don't want this to get messed up. I ain't trying to go back to, I know I was down on earth. I know I told you that, but I want you to go back. Rewind back to that slide, and I'll close with that. Take me back to that first text, you guys. That first text, the one about forgiveness. The one about mercy. Take me to that first text, the one about God forgiving. Yeah, read that with me, church. Keeping mercy for thousands. Forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin. And that will by no means clear. I want you to know God loves forgiveness. He loves mercy. And he loves grace. And guess what? Guess what, man? <sighs> he gives my man this credit card, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He gives me a credit card. And right before or shortly before his own crucifixion, he shows Moses that Moses has been forgiven. Because <laughs> all Moses wanted to do was set foot in the promised land. Oh, Lord Jesus. And when Jesus needed some encouragement, <laughs> when he needed some strength, <laughs> Oh, who comes down but Elijah and Moses to say, hold on, man. I need you to press on. I know I told you I liked it down here, but I like it way better up there. I need you to hold on until you get through. Trust me, when you get up there, I'll be waiting to put my arms around you. When you get up there, I'll be rejoicing. I'll be happy. Just listen, man. Don't make me come back down here. Hold on, Jesus. And today, because of his love for us, we can stand here and say Moses was dead. <laughs> for now, out of Smith, he's alive. He's redeemed. No, he didn't die and go to heaven. Lord help us. He died, was resurrected, and then went to heaven. Can the church say amen? amen? Father in heaven, we thank you for your word today. We thank you for those that have come into this place tonight. Bless them, keep them, watch over them, and protect them. In Jesus' name we pray. Let everyone say amen. Amen. Amen again. I want to see that couple over there to my left. I want to see them quickly uh, in my office. Yes, they have detention today. We're giving them detention. Come on up here to my office. Let me speak to this lovely couple. God bless all of you tonight. Have a wonderful evening. 
Yes, you're done? All right, cool, yeah. I apologize for the elders getting me up a little late tonight. It's all right, it's all right, you know. God bless you guys, man. God bless you. Have a wonderful evening. Let me see these two. Well, um, church, that was the benediction. I believe Pastor gave us the benediction. So consider yourselves dismissed. See you on Sabbath.